Kanchanaburi is a small town just two and a half hours west of Bangkok. It offers history, adventure, and delicious eats. Most famously known for the tragedy featured in films such as The Bridge of a River Kauai and The Railway Man, Kanchanaburi offers a first-hand look into this moment of history. Across from the Kanchanaburi War Cemetery is a museum that gives you the historic timeline of events and a detailed look into what it took to build the Thai Burma Railway. Okay, the significance of this railway is that it was to connect Yangon and Bangkok, so Burma and Thailand. And during World War II, Japan used POWs, poor civilians, and forced slaves to build it. And in the process, because it was so dangerous and the conditions were so poor, that over 300,000 men lost their lives. So that's how it got its nickname, the Death Railway. You can imagine the type of disease and infection that can fester in a climate like this, along with malnutrition and physical abuse, all leading to a fatal end. Aside from Kanchanaburi's historic tragedy, you can still escape for a little enchantment. Irwan National Park is ideal for hikers, adventurers, and naturists alike. To get there, simply take the bus from Kanchanaburi Bus Terminal marked Irwan 8170. It can take anywhere from one to two hours depending on the time of day and the amount of people hopping on or off. But once you arrive, simply follow the signs and begin your exploration. Alright, so I got here a little early because I wanted to beat the crowds, but now I'm thinking that might have been a bad idea because snakes and all. So there are about 75 poisonous snakes in Thailand, so yeah. I'm a little scared. Okay, now this is the second tier, but it's the main watering hole. But I'm taking you guys even further. There are seven levels to the waterfall, each getting bluer and bluer. But be sure to wear your swimsuits because this jungle trek is best with the reward of cool blue waters at the top. So we're about halfway there and I thought I'd take a little bit of a breather and explain what this is. So this is a spirit tree and it is a tree that has either historical meaning or maybe something important happened here, or something significant. Um, and basically the monks and other Buddhists around have blessed it and wrapped it with these ribbons and then there's also other ways to pay homage to it. But fun fact, in Thailand, spirit trees cannot be cut down. So even if cut all the other trees down, this one would have to stay because it has been blessed and it will remain here for as long as it can. We made it to the top and now it's time for a well-deserved dip in the pool. The light blue color is from the algae on the bottom of the pool, but don't worry, it's safe to swim. And these bottom feeders can provide a pedicure much like the spas you see around Thailand, if you're into that sort of thing. Now you can see why this place is enchanting. It looks like a scene right out of Fern Gully. Uh-oh, looks like this hike has made me hungry. Time to head into town for lunch. I know what you're thinking. I don't usually eat this much, but after today's journey, I think I've earned the splurge. Plus, I love the variety. La Mu, Som Tom, Isan Sausage, and what Southern girl doesn't like fried chicken? Well, it's time for me to head back home. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about Ken Chenaburi as much as I did. See you guys next time. Sawadee ka!